Hi and welcome back. Kathleen here. I worked on a few things since our last video. I came in and added one more uh, color enhanced image from the Montana tree, the original one, and upped it in saturation and decided I would use it to get some of my background detail. I used this soft brush from the Cloner's Touch Up. The opacity was at 41. I thought I'd show you something fun. A couple of, uh, well, probably about of a year ago, I was playing with busted seams. So this is a lot of fun to work with. But the first thing you have to do is take the glow off of it. Because as you can see, it has this white glow to it. So I'm going to implement the phone clone color and I'm going to remove the particle glow on it so that that is whited out. And let's show you what that looks like. I'm on another layer just to show you. So it's kind of a fun little brush to play with, but it smears quite a bit. So let's go over here to the advanced brush control and it works off of a flow map. And what I'm going to do is move the edge of the flow map up. You can see how it doesn't kick out quite as much smear. And then let's come over here to the flow map and let's just use, say, maybe 8% of the flow map. And the flow map panel is, uh, I always keep it open over here. It's on the side of my papers. And we're using Madness and I have it at an angle of 87. Uh, inverted and then a scale of 163 and so that's what I'm going to use for this and you can see the stroke preview right here and see what I can come up with. See this gives you some wonderful textures to play with and I'm just pulling off the colors and it makes it a lot of fun. I love to play with the brushes like this just to see what see what I can do what new textures I can come up with and I'm going to use it in the ground cover here just to add some textures and it may stay here it may not but it's on another layer I can close it out, turn it on, I can lighten it, whatever I like to do with it. And you can always go back in and adjust any of this that you want. So you can see then how they lengthen. But it's a lot of fun just to use things like this as an added texture. It gives your painting depth and interest. And you come back over and reset your brush. Or you can save it as a new one. I have one that I use myself. It looks like this that I made for myself. But I go back in and play with the brushes quite often like this. You can do it up in your tree if you'd like. Just scatter it around. Usually if I do it in one place, I'm gonna do it in a few more. Uh, continues the harmony of the piece, and especially if you're using color, it continues color harmony. Just add some of that texture back in here. There is a board that runs along here and I'm not going to put that in there. It, I guess it's at an angle along a fence here. So there we go. I think that I think I'm gonna leave it at that with this brush. And this will kind of be underneath some of my painting. And 
give me some little branches and things like that that stick out which makes it kind of fun and loose I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to grab another source and let's take the paper and up that scale more it spreads that texture out Well, that'll be the beginning of our grasses. All right, and so we're on another layer. If you want to do anything different with that, I have lowered the opacity, and I'm going to leave it at that because it's so strong. So I'm going to come back in with some more painting over the top of this, and I'm going to come back up here to my rough oil. I'm going to reset it. So I'm going to make it a grainy soft alpha blend. I'm going to bring the opacity down. And I'm going to come over here to my papers. Right now we're on flow maps. I'm going to move back over here to papers. And I think I'm going to pick maybe window frost. I do a little bit different pattern. Maybe similar to limbs. And I've got it a larger scale. Maybe I'll make it even larger. And let's see, color wise, I go to a light color right here. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit there. And give myself a little bit of texture as I work in this so that we have a, a limb here with some depth. I want that to come in there and just cover up and make that side soft. And this is just some tapping. And on your papers, make sure that you have a random grain rotation checked. Back up here. Let me have some of these other colors here trying to establish again a light a medium and a dark just bringing this in to make it a little bit fuller and i've got this nice background in here that's kind of blending with back over here And anytime I want to pick up any of those other colors, I can to enhance depth within the branch. And if I want to lighten that even more, like it's kind of maybe at the top, got some of these other colors going here. And as you work along this edge, you don't want a hard edge so lightly move your brush around and it will do some blending so we're beginning to have more depth within the branch itself and if you keep your opacity at about 69 or lower it'll help blend these colors better since we already got these colors down here we we can go ahead and use them and that continues our color harmony and I'm not grabbing anything new to introduce it which would just confuse things so let's do a little bit of work in these shadow areas I'm gonna bring this down here just a little bit deepen that a little bit and just cuz it's a tree branch doesn't mean it has to be brown your eye is going to tell you that hey that's brown <laughs> when it's really not I see a lot of people trying to paint brown trees and actually everything is made up of reflected light so it's going to reflect a lot of what's around it and this is something you don't see a whole lot in a photograph 
unless the photographer's been really strategic at picking up those colors and values. And it's, it's not always easy to do with a camera. This is a um, board and I'm going to just get rid of that. And if that doesn't want to get dark enough, let's come down here into maybe this purple. It makes a really nice shadow. Good contrast next to the tree. We need some good contrast here because there is, this is our, our focal area. And so we need good contrast between the light and the dark and a good mixture of color right here. Work on some of that. You want a little bit sharper edges in your focal area. So we've got these colors here that are contrasting and there's a sharpness to them. And so it will naturally move the eye into this area. Let's go here to the Sargent brushes. So let's try the Drippy Jellyfish brush. It's a bit of a fun brush. I'm going to tone down the strength. I've got 100% bleed. It has a little swirly motion right there, as you can see. If I up that reset, get a little bit more color. But how about if we go to the advanced brush controls? I'm over here to shape, hard media. Let's give this brush some elongation. And so that our dab is a little different. And as we turn it, you can see how it shoots out. And so then let's take this brush and give ourselves some grasses. Okay, so the value is turned way too much for me up. So I'm going to give it a U variability of about one. Bring in a few other colors, but the value was just way too much because it was bringing in a real dark gray color. So you can use it with or without papers. From over here, it's a hard drip. Let's give it a grainy hard drip. And what paper? Let's uh, try Window Frost or Madness. And now you can see this pretty texture you begin to get. That gives us more of this lovely ground cover look. Grasses that they are important, but not important there. Really, it's mainly the color that's the most important there. I'm going to come up here and grab some orange that's in the tree and bring that in. And make sure on your paper that random grain rotation is checked so you won't get repeating patterns. If you want less repeating pattern, then you would get both of those checks. But I like that nice, coarse, rough look. And again, I'm going to come up here and pick up some of those colors. And kind of keep the corners a little darker, just so your eye doesn't move over there to that edge. And then I'm going to pick up some of that color and I'm going to bring it up into a lighter value. Since this is the ground and it's going to be picking up a little bit more of that sun. That so the value is going to be lighter. It will be just underneath your sky value. Shoot, kind of this cool thing going on here. 
I'm going to come over here to my paper and I'm going to change the angle. I'm getting that funny pattern right there, even though it's not supposed to repeat. You can see that little pattern right there. So let's take some of this color. Then I'm going to come back to the oils gravura and I'm going to pick the rough edge blender and blend in some areas that I've got right here just very lightly. So it makes some pretty ground cover. And you can come in here and develop this area, you know, in here. And you can see some of the hillside back here. So how about if we take and go back to our rough oil and engage that clone color right there. And let's see if we can pick out a little bit of this color right here. A little bit of this background. To give it some definition right in here. And of course you can always do what you want to with these little trees along here. You can add a fence. A lot of different things you can do with this. And then we still have some of our little uh, busted seams textures there. Which makes it kind of fun. Just giving it a little bit more definition. Okay, so you can do a fence and you can do whatever you want to to finish that up. It makes it a lot of fun. It's really a fun little painting to do and a, a fun little painting to play with the colors. And if you want to get uh, real fancy, let's add uh, another layer. And then let's come up here to this blue. Let's move it on up here a little bit more. And let's bring the reset down just a little bit, the opacity down a little bit, and let's add a little bit of that sky color to the top of the tree. Um, this is something that a lot of artists do because you do have reflected light. And it gives it a real nice a little blend of colors and sets that yellow down just a little bit. The last thing, if you want to do some leaves, let's stay with the rough oil. Drop down our advanced brush controls. Bring that jitter all the way up. Come over here to shape. And let's do some spacing. Let's bring our reset up to give us some more color. Bring our opacity up. And then size, let's bring that size down. As you can see, it looks like little leaves here. And since we've got it on another layer, let's just play with this and see what we can come up with. So yeah, we have a little bit of leaves flying off of this tree.
So where you'll get the best effect is in a shadow area. And don't overdo, but it will get that feeling of the little leaves blowing in the breeze that it's losing some of those leaves. Get another color. Let's brighten it so we can see it. And then we'll put some in the ground here. Up here to the yellow. Stay within that. Up it all the way up as much as we can. And then have a few down in here. Okay, so go ahead and finish this. Add limbs, twigs, whatever you think it needs. And I hope this helps you in your future paintings and cloning. And remember, creativity is contagious. Pass it on.